Hi Spain fans, hola chicos, it's Richard and we're out today and we're going to take a little walk around the very popular Almeria town of Albox. It's a mid-sized town, very popular as well with the expat community and I hope this is going to become a, a regular feature getting out and about actually on the street to give you a real idea of what life is like here during the pandemic, possibly as well with the, the, the Brexit, uh, what, what impacts that's having on the various communities. So let's get out and about and let's go for a walk and we'll have a look at how things are going. So I'm going to start off in the Plaza Mayor here in Albox. Normally, of it, you can see it's a beautiful day, it's February, sun's shining. Normally, this is a really busy square. We've got the Perea Hotel and Restaurant sitting behind me there. Very, very busy. You know, we're a real cafe culture here normally and pre-COVID. And the restrictions have now been lifted. So we are allowed to go from town to town and go out and take a coffee, have a beer. There is a curfew system in place, you know, everything has to be shut, all the bars by six o'clock. We've got to wear face masks in the street wherever we go. But still, although we're able to come out, you can see a lot of people aren't taking advantage of it. So let's take a little pan around the whole of the Plaza Mayor. It's a very, um, well, it's, it's the, the major square in the town of Albox, beautiful square, as you can see nice pedestrian area you've got the hotel restaurant Perea over there tables outside and they're normally absolutely chocolate it's difficult to get a seat but it's a beautiful day as we saw, saw earlier but panning around the whole square you know a usual gathering point for families people taking exercise dog walkers one fella's just walked across with a carrier bag but I'm virtually standing here on my own today panning round Got the town hall over here. Pharmacy, a clothes shop which is now up for rental. So I suppose a victim of the of the pandemic and also a very popular, or it was, pizza restaurant sitting over there in the corner. Normally with tables and chairs out on the street. Now it's up or fully closed. It could be for rental, I'm not sure, but it's certainly not open at the moment. And it normally would be. The restrictions, as I said, have now been lifted, so we are allowed out during the during the day, and we're allowed to go and take a coffee, go to a restaurant, walk around fairly freely, even drive between town boundaries. But here again, you won't know it, but this is a very popular pub, restaurant, cafe. Tables and chairs always out in the street and normally teeming with people. It's 11.30 in the morning and the square's virtually deserted now down a little street uh, one of the myriad of pedestrian streets in Albox normally quite busy shopping streets this is called Calle Sabella it connects if you like the Plaza Mayor and then going on to another one of the main squares in Albox as you can see hardly anyone around there are, even the shops that are open and there are a couple there's hardly anyone in them you've got a beautiful cafe just coming up on my left here normally teeming and this is very popular the Spanish community but they're not coming out either, so it's not just Suffolk's Pats that are not coming out, it's also the Spanish. Another one of the main squares in Albox, probably the most popular in terms of the number of cafes that are out in the street, little small shops, banks, etc. This is a very focal point of the town where people come for tapas and, you know, outside eating and lovely cups of coffee, where you can see one of the most popular restaurants here, um, the Mirador. It, it, it closed down during the first um, lockdown period restriction and it's never opened again. But there, are, there is some positives, like over here we've got place has just opened. This is a, a fantastic sportswear shop and what we're beginning to see, I think, is that the small independents are the ones that are really suffering. Um, the, the bigger boys, the franchises, are the ones opening all the new businesses. If we pan around now to the left, you can see another popular cafe over there. What, five, seven tables, only one of them occupied. And it's very difficult to comprehend, I appreciate, but this is usually teeming at this time of year and at this time of day. So carrying our walk around the other, one of the other main squares, affectionately called the, the Donkey Square, you can see why right behind me. As I said, it's a very, very popular square normally teeming with life and it's refreshing to see we'll have a little pan around in a minute because some of the cafes there on the corner are actually quite busy the the travel restrictions for this area and the lockdown is you know they've been lifted and we've got quite a lot of freedom compared to guys in the uk 
but what we are really missing here is obviously the tourists you know February is a surprise month but it's normally really really busy March as well of course you can't get over now from the UK and that is seriously having an impact on our local businesses the markets the cafes which would normally be you know 30% full of tourists or people over to visit family and of course they're not here there's three very popular little cafe bars all lumped together there and I don't know if you can see it but there's actually signs of life people are out enjoying the sunshine and taking advantage of the restrictions being lifted this continues on up onto the main high street of Albot so we're certainly going to take a little wander down there and let's see now that people can whether they're taking advantage of this whether they're out and about doing some shopping so wandering now along Albox High Street passing the very popular motor Albox which is a, an emporium for ladies and, and nice shoes and dresses and everything else the high street is actually you know it's, it's not busy or anywhere near as busy as it should be but there are people out and about and people making the most of, of, of the shops, which is nice to see. As I said, we're gonna do quite a number of these features on a, on a regular basis, looking at the different towns and the different areas. What I'm not gonna do is give you all the daily stats, you know, number of positive cases per 100,000. There's lots of brilliant sites already out there doing that and on YouTube and social media. So this is really just to get a proper feel for what's happening in the towns during the pandemic. So taking another look here along, along the high street, you can see the usual queues now at the back, in fact, of daily life, you know, they're essential businesses so they've been allowed to stay open through the pandemic, but you now have to queue out and only two people normally involved in, uh, allowed into each branch at a time, possibly four, depending on the size of the, the size of the branch. As you can see, people out and about, And thankfully, not too, too many businesses closed. Bearing in mind, we've just come from another period of, of three weeks where things like clothes shops, jewellery shops, everything were counted as non-essential and not allowed to open. Um, and that would be the third sort of lockdown, the shortest one, but the third sort of lockdown we've had. It's encouraging to see all these wonderful shops sitting here. What's not encouraging is the number of people out in them I think as each lockdown goes by, it's becoming more and more people are losing confidence and they're becoming, it's becoming more difficult for them to, to feel safe to, to leave the house. So subsequently, they are still, even though they're not forced to, they're very, they're very much limiting their visits out of their homes to go down to Mercadona and just do essential shopping. And I think, although we're seeing quite a few people here, these are all people that actually live in the town of Albox. What we're not seeing is the visitors that would normally be here coming from other towns like Arbalaeus and Zahena, or the tourists who are over or visiting friends and family or perhaps over here to look for properties. So now having a wander down Calle Andalusia, little side street that runs off of the high street, one of my favorites um, because we come to a, a wonderful little bakery cafe, La Pecanica, just over here behind me. What an amazing baker's fresh gattos, cakes, bite sizes, creations, but a real family gathering point. And again, nice to see today, lots of people out availing themselves of it. You might have noticed there's the, the ruling here at the moment is you can sit four to a table. The tables have got to be distance apart. And if you're leaving the table to go up to the counter or, or to go to a bar, face mask needs to go back on. And of course, if you're leaving the table to walk along the street, face mask needs to go back on and then it can come off again when you're sitting at your, your socially distanced table of four. So I've come out of um, the Plaza Mayor now, coming out of the dead centre of town, walking along a, a little street that leads up, if you like, to our medical centre, which is a 24-hour offensia. And again, normally a very popular street. You've got a fantastic cycle shop, as you'll see in a minute. And the famous Bar Wasi over here on my left fantastic food and tapas very big terrace we're going to wander in there and have a, a bit of refreshment in a minute it's decidedly gorgeous today very very hot what we're going to do as well over over the course of, of, of these walk arounds which I think might be hopefully an interesting topic is actually go and interview give some small interviews some business owners retailers um, those that have been kind of working through it keeping their doors open just to get an idea from them of what they've experienced, what they're going through. 
and how, you know, dealing with the pandemic and has, for some of them, Brexit as well, how difficult it's been. Asador El Olivio, very, very popular little cafe. You can see not so many people sitting out there. And then you've got the restaurant bar Senna over there behind me. Fantastic restaurant. Um, that only opens in the evenings anyway, and it is open at the moment, but obviously by reservation. So if you're coming over and you do get a chance to go out for a nice romantic dinner, then La Senna's a very good spot to choose. So let's have a wander now down back to Barwasi. You've seen as we go around, you know, there is traffic, um, but for the scale of town, I think it's very difficult because what we haven't done is been able to give the contrast of back when times were good for, or back when times were normal, for want of a better description. Lots of keen cyclists out here, and that's something that we have been able to do during the pandemic. Even in the strict lockdown, we were allowed out for an hour's exercise a day. So lots of people took to their cycles or lots of people who haven't cycled before suddenly took up cycling and what a fantastic pastime. So coming along one of the main streets now into Albox, well, connects Albox if you like from the outside world, joins from the BP. We're passing a lovely little coffee bar or bar called the Triana. As you can see, nice to see people out availing themselves of their socially distancing cup of coffee and a beer. I've come down here to Liverpool because we're passing one of the biggest supermarkets in the town, Mercadona. There's actually three big supermarkets, Dia and Lidl. Mercadona is probably the most popular. Lots of controversy during the pandemic that their prices have gone skyrocketing, but we'll come back and we'll cover that on another day. But it's useful for you to see. And I, will, I do have to say, in all fairness, we didn't suffer the shortages. There wasn't lack of toilet rolls. There certainly the places weren't mobbed. They've been very well run and put in lots of social distancing measures, which I think we've all taken advantage of. So let's go in, pop in and see Jenny at Cloud Road Boutique here in Albox, selling a wide range of ladies' fashion and accessories for every size and style and budget. Let's pop in and say hi and see how she's been coping during the pandemic. It's not being able to plan. I always plan in advance because it's a seasonal business with the collections. Um, unfortunately, every time we've had a new collection in last year, then we got either into lockdown or restrictions. So it's a case for me at the moment of sort of forgetting the different seasons and just getting everything in as quick as I can and just hoping if it's available, when we're open, people will come and buy it. But it, it has made it very difficult within the business. I think the business has had to change greatly through the pandemic. Um, I've always prided myself that when people come in, they come in for that one-to-one -one, um, personal shopper. And unfortunately, when the shop's been closed, it, that's not been available. So as much as I've never wanted to go down the route of everything being online, I found that it's the only option that I've had, which is to do all my launches or my fashion shows to have a video done and then yet to put it online to showcase to people what will be available once we reopen. And to be honest, it was a fantastic thing to do and, and it did work. It certainly did help to keep the business going. I don't know whether happy is the right word. I suppose I'm grateful for the small amount that we got. The, um, the government did eventually pay us a smaller help, a little bit of help and assistance. To be honest, we had to jump through a lot of hoops to get it. And as much as it was better than nothing, it really only scratched the surface of what the outgoings of a small business are. So yes, I'm grateful for it. Did it make a massive difference? Not really. I did feel that we were let down a little bit by them. Two of my biggest supplies are in the UK. Um, while we were in our last you know, local lockdown, both of them informed me that they wouldn't be supplying me anymore as they're not going to be dealing with Spain. So I'm now in a position where I've got to look for new suppliers, which is you know, easier said than done. Yes, there is lots of companies out there, but you know, where do I start? Can I get the same prices? Am I going to get the same quality? So it is giving me a little bit of a headache, something I will overcome. But yeah, it's, it's going to be difficult trying to source those, those new items to get into the boutique. I 
people think, oh, well, you're open, so you're doing okay. But it, it's certainly not been like that. When there's been the, the restrictions on the municipality, so I literally can only have the people from this local area. And a lot of my customers are from outside that area. So there has been days when, yes, I'm open, but I don't see anybody, and you are potentially running at a loss. So, yeah, municipality lockdown, they make a really big difference to the business. Well, the good news is I've got one of um, my really good collections coming in, which is Maluca, which is a Portuguese collection. Um, the collection is exclusive to me. I'm the only one that supplies it in this area. It's something that the ladies love. It offers that little bit of something different, a bit of quirkiness, a bit more high end, um, but it's worth it. It's quality, it won't date, and the ladies seem to love it. Okay, so now coming down past Los Lizos, which is a wonderful fruit and vegetable store, also got a fantastic butchers in there as well. Um, now, next on my right is a lovely bar, Bar La Panto. Um, lovely to see some tables outside and some people sitting there. Um, there's also quite a few people on the interior as well. It's a, 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 an English-owned cafe, or British-owned cafe, and, and yet yeah, you can see it's very popular with the Spanish. And we're now just coming down past a, a, a real health box institution, Soul Super Mercados. So I thought I'd stop off at Soul Super Mercados and say it's owned by Jackie and April. They've owned the shop for eight and a half years. It's a, a, a British supermarket, but also popular, not just with the expats, the Spanish, and I'm loving their sign here about, hang on, let me read, treat, treat your mask like your knickers, apparently. So I think what we'll do is we'll go in and have a chat with Jackie and April and ask them how things are going and how they cope with business over the course of the pandemic. We ask them to sanitise on the way in, we have floor markings, we have uh, safe distance posters, we sanitise our baskets and our surfaces, our freezers, our fridges constantly. Um, at the moment we cannot get any goods in from the UK due to restrictions, um, whether it be the borders, customs, the actual suppliers of our goods, we need paperwork that is an inch thick once the goods will eventually get over here. Customs and the government tend to be changing the goalposts. Every time we are just about to get a delivery sent over, they will require another piece of paper. Um, it's been a very difficult time. Luckily, just before Brexit hit, we brought in enough stock we hope to see us through until we can get our deliveries through certain stock is certainly not going to come through anytime soon we are struggling with freezer stock and we're struggling with fridge stock dramatically the ever-changing rules which um, change weekly and customers adhering to those rules that are our fault. We have to, to keep trading, to keep the business safe for us and for our customers. We have to stick to these rules. And not all our customers either adhere to them rules or like the rules that we have to stipulate to keep our environment safe. To be fair, we have done pretty well um, because there's been a lot of bulk, buy, bulk buying, panic buying and also we implemented deliveries which have proved um, tremendous for us. Very successful the deliveries. Yeah. Hard work but very successful. The first lockdown we were very very busy uh, because people were panic buying. When they closed the municipalities footfall did drop drastically. Uh, we did ask the government for help because we didn't want to put our staff on ERTA um, because we wanted to keep them working and their hours going. So we did ask the government for help, um, but because we're autonomous and that we could open through this time, 
they said that we didn't need any help, even though footfall fell by half during the municipality lockdown. say all of them, um, but we do sell a lot of HP sauce, pet food, bread, soup, sorry, beans, bacon, sausages, and the Spanish love the British chocolate and gravy granules and bacon products. Yes.